XM FM. Which one do I take first? This can be the question on the minds of many, especially for people who do not have prior actual background. And from my little experience, having taken exam P or passed exam P for January 2022 and passed exam FM for June 2022, by the grace of God, I'd like to share my take on it. I would not want you to take this as the word of God. Um, I mean, like a sovereign rule that should guide you but i think you would be able to deduce some wisdom from this and to make the right decision so before we go into the content have you subscribed if not this is the time to do so what is subscription what is subscribe you know that very red thing down there staring at you just go down and click on the button and once you see subscribed it means you've subscribed but if not and you still see it in the red format it means you're just trying not to be supportive of this content but i know you're definitely gonna do so true or false okay so let's go into today's content exam p or exam fm which one to take first so let's do it okay so i would say that it's not one final or one main answer to this it depends on some factors which i'm definitely going to talk about briefly so one before you decide on exam fm or exam p i want you to be frank with yourself do you have like so much time to do this exam that's the first thing. in fact before you attempt any actual exam you have to ask yourself do you have the time are you ready to sacrifice the fun i mean a part of the fun sometimes a majority of it for the hours spent <laughs> trying to understand concepts and most especially trying to solve lots of lots of past questions so instead of asking which actuarial exam should you take first i would say ask which of them or which of the topics have i recently prepared for recently can be relative it can be two months ago three months ago four months five months six seven a year two years three years anything you've recently done so the background on exam p has to do with you know p for probability yeah and statistics you know that kind of stuff and integration calculus and fm f for finance i hope i'm not i'm not getting into trouble for making these short cards or this i mean on a more serious note, FM has to do with finance, so um, a bit of options, a bit of annuities, a bit of loans and bonds. So if you took any recent class in any of this, so for instance, if you've taken any recent class on probability, I would advise, even though I it's not mandatory, but I would advise that you look into or you consider taking exam P first, before exam FM. Yes, and if you've taken anything that has to do with finance, probably loans, bonds, amortization, I would recommend FM to you. So the first factor or the first influence to your decision as to which exam to take, I would say which of them or which of the topics do you think you recently took? If it happens that you have not taken any at all, no probability, no finance, with a whole sincere heart, go for FM because I love it. Okay, so on to the next point. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. So yes, I'm recommending FM because I love FM and I love it does not imply it's easy because I had to pass it on my third attempt. If you've not seen that video, please go watch it. I mean, go find that video. Finally, the finally meant finally pass an exam ever. Go watch it and um, learn anything you can learn from, from my, my, my little stuff I shared with you. Yes, so if you've not watched it, it's a time to go take a look at it and pick some nuggets of wisdom that you could use in your preparation for exam ever. And the fact that I'm saying take exam FM first, if you have no background, it's not mean it's easy, 
but I feel like you don't need much concept aside what the syllabus gives you to pass. So what I mean by this is that for example, yes, of course, you might have covered the material, but if your calculus is weak, I mean, then again, this is not the word of God. So this is not like supreme thing that if you don't go by it, you're going to fail. But if your calculus is weak, for example, it's really going to worry you. So people who do not have a um, math background yet, I would recommend FM. And then also another way to generalize or to differentiate is what do you want to score? I mean, the total score is like a 10. Definitely, I'm sure you know, but uh, you know by now it ranges from a one to ten. If you feel like I want to make uh, anything between one and five, you go. To, of course, definitely five is not a pass; it's a fail. Anything between one and six, and that's what my stream can do. Then I recommend exam P to you. But if you feel like I want to get a six between a six and a ten, like you have the energy available. I recommend exam FM. Let me explain this briefly why I say so. So for instance, exam P um, do not have so many or not so much related concepts. So it's possible to do well at this section and not be so good at another section. I, um, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So let me use exam FM to um, explain this briefly. For exam FM, if you do not understand the time value of money and you do not understand annuities, forget it. You definitely land on the five or a four. And you know why? Because your annuities and your time value of money, which forms the basics of FM. That's my own observation. In order to get loans and bonds so well and so done correctly, your annuities must be on point and your time value should be on point. Aside knowing the formulas, these forms the basics. So once these major sections are weak, you're definitely going to fail. So for me, I feel like FM is a thing. It's either a less than a five or a more than seven. It's possible for people to score a six, but I feel like that's how it come off to me. This is my own personal review on these two, these two um, exams. I scored a nine on FM. Yeah, of course I took it a number of times, but I scored a nine. And this is because once I worked on annuities and time value of money, every other thing followed strongly. And that's why I scored a nine out of a 10. But for exam P, if you do some, I'm not saying the exam is, um, is easy, trust me. You definitely have to go through a lot of processes and understanding and lots of past questions. I cannot overemphasize this. You might have done, you might have been good like with the, with the concept, with the theory part, but without solving past questions, I don't know, it might take a miracle for you to pass in a minute. So on that note, if you feel you, you have the thing to work on the basis of FM and get through everything, it might be very easy for you. But for exam P, you can get away with one or two concepts, maybe some transformation, having knowledge gaps. This is not me saying you can be mediocre, but looking at yourself, which one are you ready for? For FM, you need to get the basics right because every other thing is built on whatever you studied in section one and section two. Trust me, there's no like so off the topic kind of, um, I mean, from section five, everything leans wholly on section one and two. So if you feel very confident with annuities, you can take a glance through the syllabus. And if you think this is something that you would understand, then that is something that you should consider. But if you also think that you are a master of calculus, I think exam P is calling out your name and please say yes. And that's the one for you. So now let's go on to the next thing in deciding which actual exam to take. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. So I might come from the cost, and now, I mean the cost perspective. You can do it. Some people do exam FM with one calculator, and some people also do exam P with one calculator. But uh, for efficiency and speed sake, for exam FM, you might need to. So if you feel like uh, in terms of budget, I want something much efficient. I mean, cost efficient. 
then I think XMP might be good for you. And you need a TI30XS calculator or anyone related to it would do for you. But for exam FM, for speed, sake, and efficiency, you might need both the BA2 Plus and the TI30. So do I have the money to get two calculators, pay for exam fee, pay for study material? If the answer is yes, you can go in for FM. If it's no, let's do the P. What do you think? If you like the content, there's a time to like it. Hit on the thumbs up button. And if you've not subscribed, there's a time to do so. So let's talk and wrap it up on choosing between exam P and exam FM. Okay, so after you've decided, okay, so after you've decided, the next thing you might want to do okay so now is the time to decide which exam you want to take do i want to do p first fm second it does not really matter what you take first or what you take second all that is needed is any of them can be taken anytime so decide so some people may ask what's the best study material to use to study for exam p and exam fm I'll be a bit biased here. I used coaching actuaries, so that's what I can recommend. So this is my own personal, my own personal recommendation. Coaching actuaries, if you can afford it, buy the coaching actuaries. So we have the learn part and the adapt. Adapt is for you to adapt to the nature of the exam past questions. And the learn has to do with the manual or the manual with the videos is up to you. Just go in for what your pocket can afford and um for exam fm2 i used the same thing coaching actuaries and i loved it but okay someone said okay so if coaching actuaries was good why did you pass on your third attempt it has nothing to do with coaching actuaries it has all to do with me it has all to do with making time to study it has all to do with balancing it had all to do with learning from my mistakes i was learning wrongly some stuff which I learned it the hard way. And I've shared it in that video already. So if you've not seen that video, which says I'm finally <sighs> past exam FM, that is the time for you to do so. So having said the coaching actually is, is my own recommended materials for you. People might say, okay, what if I can't afford coaching actually for maybe six months because I want to prepare with six months. If you can't afford it, I would say use a textbook the recommended textbook from the SO website, like go look for those textbooks, buy them. They might be maybe affordable. I've not bought one before, but maybe affordable than the study material from coaching luxuries or other related um, study sources. And when it's time is getting to maybe a month or two to the exam, then you buy just the adapt. The adapt is also like a a sale option to practice with exams, time your speed. Um, check your errors, your accuracy level. It's really good. You need to adapt. So go buy it if you can afford. So there's another group that says, Hi, RJ. I'm not able to buy the coaching actuaries for learn. I'm not able to buy the adapt as well. So what do I do? I would say, you know, don't allow anything to hold you back. If you are aware of some scholarships around, maybe Burberry Reform, um, IEBA like this, um, the IBA, um, International Association of Black Actuaries, that um, allow some candidates, qualified candidates, to apply for the FM scholarship, that's your chance to be on the lookout on the IBA page. So go be a member now if you really want to take this actual career series. And once that scholarship is out, you apply and who knows, you may be the next winner for that award. It comes to a group of people which can help you. But if you tried all these avenues, you still do not get a scholarship, you do not get anyone to help you pay for the exam fee and all, I'm not an exam fee, definitely you can't pay exam fee, that's not charity. Yes, but for study materials, we can be sometimes quite expensive than the exam fee itself. I would say use the textbook, um, yeah. Use the textbook and when it's time to solve past questions, there are sample past questions online from the SOA with solutions. Go download them, go through them with your calculator, but just make sure you are frank with yourself, integrity matters. And time yourself, if it's supposed to be a three hour exam, make sure you use just three hours in completing these exams. 
some people might want to use all these um comfortable study softwares material blah blah if you can't afford don't be so hard on yourself there's time for everything this might be your time for hard copy um ask the example questions from online but there'll be a time you can afford don't put so much pressure on yourself there's time for everything and um i mean life is life god is good all the time so if you can't afford this is what i would recommend um to you yeah okay so some of them also ask where do i find it so just go on google and type sample soa past questions with solutions it comes sometimes in different documents questions then solutions and download don't tell me to put the link inside um okay i think for the goodness of god i'm gonna put the link for both fm and p in the comment section and uh, watch out if you like what i'm doing it's time to hit on the like button uh yes then let's go to the last thing or let's finish up and just go so you can go right to your exams <laughs> <laughs> okay so lastly if you're done taking this exam you use almost all your last savings and money maybe you're from an international country but one thing you should know that international students have a discount so when it's an international student i don't mean like international students in the u.s or canada but i mean you're outside the u.s you're outside like canada like that's international for today so if you are in that range, um, like for instance, exam P and exam FM, the regular fee is $250, but it can go for $200 for you. So remember to apply such discounts for your own good. And if it happens that you took this exam and you did not pass for some reason, don't be so hard on yourself. I mean, life still continues. Don't be so hard. There's much life than an exam pass. In as much as I want to see you pass, if it happens that you score a four, or five but you are residing in the United States or Canada if I'm not getting my information wrong um, you qualify for reimbursement from certain organizations one you can apply for reimbursement if you filled with a four or five from the SOA if you school in the United States so I mean don't let this benefit pass you by I think that's it for me for choosing between FM and exam fee. I just hope with this short video, is it even short? It was much helpful to you and you'll be able to decide what you want to do from today. I wish you all the best in the exam you're about to take. And if you've not watched the video on the FM, kindly go do so, so you don't make those same mistakes. And pass, and I'll be waiting for your congratulations. But until you're done with that exam. Congratulations in advance. Bye.